Hi, I'm Franz Pair with Cyber Skyline, and today we're going to be learning how to look up PGP keys using a key server. So PGP stands for pretty good privacy, and it's used to facilitate asymmetric key encryption. And I think it'll be useful then to get a quick overview of how asymmetric key encryption works. So let's create this hypothetical scenario here where uh, Bob is, let's just say Bob is a reporter and Alice has some juicy, juicy tip. She wants to send this information to Bob and she wants to make sure that no one else can know about it, right? She trusts Bob to report on it and keep her confidential. And she wants to make sure that uh, no one else knows what this uh, message is. And so the way that asymmetric key encryption works is that Alice would need to um, take Bob's public key. She'll get her his public key and then with her message, and Bob's public key, she will run that through uh, the encryption function, and then she gets the encrypted message. And then she can send that message over to Bob, and Bob has the private key that can decrypt the message, and only Bob's private key should be able to decrypt the message that was encrypted using his public key. So he'll take his private key, and then stick it in there, and then he's got his a decrypted message. So that is how asymmetric key encryption works. Now, going back to this hypothetical scenario, right? It poses a question, how does Alice get Bob's public key? Because in the previous slide here, she needs his public key in order to send him a message that only he can decrypt. So how does she get that? Um, we're assuming that Alice and Bob, they've never met each other before. Um, and so, she needs to be able to get his public key. Um, now, this would mean that Bob ahead of time would need to publish his public key somewhere, right? That, that would be the only way that Alice can get it. Assuming they don't know each other personally, Bob needs to publicize it over the internet. And there are a couple of ways that he can go about doing that. And um, ideally, he, do, uh, he attempts to publish it in as many places and as ways as possible because that's going to help increase the amount of trust that other people will have that the key that he's been publishing is actually his. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail that with um, these, these two primary examples and methods that I'm going to show you. So let's start first with key servers. Um, so key servers, they do exactly what the, the name implies. They are, they are servers that uh, store keys. They facilitate the uploading of these public keys along with a corresponding identifier. So what this means is that Bob can upload his public key to the key server along with his name and his email address, for example. Now, there is a limitation here that most key servers don't by themselves verify the identity of the person uploading the public key. So that means it's possible for someone who isn't Bob to go and upload their public key pretending to be Bob. They could have Bob's name and Bob's email address. They upload that, but that's not the real Bob. That's fake. And so we need a way to address this problem. If any, any random person can go and upload keys, how do we know that this is the real Bob? So uh, with key servers and with PGP as a whole, the idea is to create what we call a web of trust. And the idea is that you basically have people vouching for each other to verify that, yes, this is the real person. And the way that this is done via key servers is that you will do something called signing someone else's key. So you'll take your public key and then you will, um, uh, you will basically publish this uh, message that says, this is who I am, this is my public key, and I am confirming that this public key is who they say they are. That's kind of what it's doing, like practically speaking, in terms of the code and the, uh, specifics there, there's a lot more technical stuff there. But in essence, the idea is that you're vouching for someone else. So going back to our example here, uh, let's just say that Alice is, um, so Alice doesn't know Bob, but let's just say Alice is friends with Charlie. And, um, and she, because she's friends with Charlie, she can talk to Charlie and she can verify that uh, when she looks up Charlie's PGP key, on the key server, you know, which particular one is actually his. And Charlie also happens to be friends with Bob. 
And since Bob has uploaded his PGP to the key server, and because Bob and Charlie are friends, what they've done is they've signed each other's PGP keys. So they vouch for each other. And so now when Alice is searching for Bob's PGP key using, let's just say his email address, let's just say she gets multiple records, right? There are a lot of people trying to pretend to be Bob. They wanna get all these uh, juicy secrets. She can feel more confident that the one PGP key that is associated with Bob's email address, that one which was signed by Charlie, the one that Charlie's vouching for, that's more likely to be the, the real one. Now, this is not a perfect solution because maybe Charlie made a mistake and he signed the wrong key, or maybe he was tricked and he got social engineered and who he thought was Bob isn't actually Bob. And so you probably don't want to just rely on one person doing the vouching in this system. And so the more you can build out this web of trust, the more people who are, are vouching for the public key, the better the bigger the overlap there is between who Alice trusts and um, who is vouching for Bob, the more that overlap, uh, the more that Alice can be certain that she has the right key for Bob. But she can never be sure. It's, it's kind of uh, just the level of comfort, the level of trust. So um, that is how key servers work in a nutshell. It sounds kind of complicated and it's not particularly practical because when you go and you want to send a message to someone, you're probably not going to want to jump through all these hoops of looking them up in a database and then going through the list of all the people that vouch for them and then seeing if you know any of those people. And then if you don't know any of these people, then like, then what do you do? <laughs> so um, it's not the most practical thing for most people on a day-to-day -day basis. However, they are still very heavily used um, to identify people, especially for open source projects. And so for like a high profile open source project where you wanna make sure that the people who are pushing out code that's being deployed on like millions of devices, those people are who they say they are. This is a, is a, is a very um, critical resource for people in that community to verify uh, people's identities. So let's go into the, uh, the next item here for internet profiles and this is very broad. So internet profiles can mean social media pages. So, uh, you know, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your GitHub. Um, it could mean your um, personal blog, for example, kind of anywhere where you have an online identity. That's what I'm referring to as an internet profile. And so let's say Bob, he posts his PGP key on his social media profiles, you know, his GitHub, maybe his personal website. And so if Alice is able to go and she searches for Bob and she finds Bob's website and she finds his GitHub profile and both of them are saying, hey, this is Bob's PGP key, they both match, then she might feel confident that this is in fact Bob's PGP key. And it's a lot more convenient than going through a database and looking through the list of people that are vouching for this person. And if you have any overlap in people that you trust, um, instead of doing all of that, you just go to their profile and you hope that the uh you know the github profile you got the right github profile you didn't get the wrong github profile and this is why the second method is also not entirely foolproof because again someone could create a fake website pretending to be bob and they could also create a fake github profile pretending to be bob and they could trick alice and alice could think that she has bob and it turns out that that isn't actually bob and so this is why it's so important that um, if you are kind of going to be using PGP, especially if you want people to use your public key to send you messages that you are using as many ways as possible to build that web of trust. You post it on key servers, you get people to sign your key, you sign their keys, you post it on your internet profiles, because the more and more ways that you can kind of use different uh, touch points to kind of verify that you are who you say you are, the more that people can have trust in um, in your profile there. So that is a, a very, very kind of like rundown overview of, of how this works. And, it's, and, and actually being able to identify people's identities online is really, really challenging. And this is kind of the, the common ways that uh, people have gone about approaching this challenge. So um, internet profiles, I don't think you all really need a demo to pull up someone's GitHub profile and uh, and find their name and um, and find their their key if they posted it on their profile. But what I'm going to show you is key servers because 
you probably are familiar with using social media, you're probably not familiar with using key servers. And so using a key server, it's the, the steps are very straightforward. It's just the results that you get are gonna take a little bit of uh, time to understand how to interpret uh, what information you're looking at. And so just three steps here, right? Uh, the first step is you want to use a well-known um, key server. I have provided a couple of examples here. There's one that Ubuntu runs. There's also the one from Open PGP and the one from MIT. These are some pretty common ones. You can kind of use them. The reason why you want to use a well-known one is that a there's um, more people. There's a bigger web. More people vouching for each other on those key servers, um, and also you probably don't want to just trust any old random key server. You want to make sure that the people who are administering this key server have some integrity as well, uh, so that the likelihood that you're getting tricked is lower. In theory, uh, whoever's running these key servers, they can fake some of these, um, uh, like they, they, could, they could basically add in fake data and, and trick people that way. So um, it's, it's important to use a reputable key server. Once you have the key server though, um, all you have to do is just search for the name, email address, or a signature. Different key servers will have different ways of doing the searching, but usually you're searching for an email address or someone's uh, PGP, like their public key signature, and then you just review the results. So pretty straightforward. And I think we're probably ready to go uh, into a demo here. So let's go and actually try to look up some of these PGP keys. All right, so um, I have pulled up one of our practice challenges here. And in this scenario, we are needing to do a PGP lookup and we have three questions here. We need to find the key fingerprint for this email address. And the key fingerprint is effectively the um, kind of like the, the, the signature. It, it, it's like the short, the easier way to refer to the PGP key because the PGP key is a very, very long sequence of characters and the fingerprint is gonna be a shortened version of that, which is easier to use. Um, the second question is asking us to basically look up a key fingerprint and figure out who whose email address is associated with that fingerprint. And then also figure out when does that expire? So the, those are our three questions here. And what I have done in advance is I've already opened up a tab for the uh, Ubuntu OpenPGP key server. And so going to that first question, we're going to look up this email address and see what we can find. So this is actually the screenshot that you uh, saw in the slides earlier, and I'll zoom in a little bit, hopefully make this a little easier to read here. And you can see that we actually get two results, two hits, and um, we have the cPanel master key, which uses this email address. And we have the cPanel security team. They use the same email address. So it's entirely possible that you basically have these two keys that might be used for different purposes. I don't know exactly like what the cPanel master key is used for versus the security team key, but they're both associated with this email address. And um, the way to read this is that you can see here, this says pub. So this is the public key. And then we have, um, this is an RSA uh, 4096 bit, so 4096 4, bit RSA key. And this is the key ID that follows, right? So bits slash key ID. So this is the key ID, um, which is the same thing as the, uh, the key fingerprint. It, it's the same thing. So we can just copy and paste that. And we've got that correct. Now, because there are multiple results, um, and this question is asking for, uh, for this email address, and there are two valid ones. And you can see here that are, there are multiple entities who've signed this. And the question is not asking for validation. Um, either one of these would be uh, valid. So I could have gone and I could have pasted this other signature and would have gotten that one correct. The next question is asking what email address is associated with this key fingerprint? So going back here, Let's go and run another search and I'm going to run that signature in here. And there we go, one result. And um, we're looking for the email address. And so the email address is this right here. So copy that, 
and paste that in here. And now we're being asked on what date does this key expire? And so um, there is a field here for the key expiration. And you need to make sure that um, you don't get confused when you read these because the, uh, at least in these results, the columns are not super obvious in, uh, when you're viewing it because um, you might just take this, assume this is correct and submit it. But up here, there's the, uh, there's the creation time, the CR time, the expire time. Um, and so this is actually the creation time, not the expiration time. So looking uh, deeper in here, you can actually see this is the creation time again for the for the key here and actually the expiration time is this one uh, the one that is expiring in 2050 so this is going to be 2050 december 26 and there we go <laughs> so that is um how you can use a PGP key server to uh, look up PGP keys either by the email address or using the key fingerprint. And the one thing I also want to make sure that you all kind of take away is be very careful when you're looking at the results. Make sure that you're looking at the right column uh, because it is uh, very easy to get confused if you're not paying uh, close attention. So uh, I hope you all found that helpful.